The engines in these races are 1,000-pound animals traveling over 30 miles an hour. The drivers ride behind the animals with only inches separating them from their opponents. The stands are full of people holding tickets, all looking for a big payday if their animal finishes first. The stakes are high, the competition is fierce, and the money is real. This is horse racing. We now have what we call one breed, one track. Hoosier Park, which was originally designed as a standard bred race course, is now all standard bred or harness racing. And Indiana Downs, which really was designed for a, thir is a thoroughbred track, is all thoroughbreds. So it makes a lot of sense. The standard bred horsemen, the harness horsemen, get to stay here for pretty much the entire year, eight months of racing. We, we can concentrate on making this track, the racing surface, the very best it can be. The horsemen appreciate it. It works for both the standard bred horsemen and the thoroughbred horsemen, and it's been, a, it's been well received by the entire industry. I got appointed by Governor Bai as the breed development chairman, which makes uh, recommendations to the racing commission, and uh, we got this darn horse racing thing going here in Indiana. I, I, it was really, really neat. That was a part of the aspect of the business that I was never involved in uh, having to do with the racetrack. As a horseman, you just show up in your race and, and uh, get your money and go. But to watch the whole structure of the whole industry inside and out, that was really, really neat. Well, we get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and come to the barn and feed the horses and we train. And we're done usually about noon, 1 o'clock and we go home and have lunch and maybe have a little nap and then we're back here at night racing. We usually get done around midnight. And I'm third generation. I, uh, I was brought up in it and uh, taught how to do it. Taught, you know, work every day and try to achieve your goals. It's, it's, it's your life, you know, and you have to love your job. And I mean, I love my job. I love these horses and, you know, if it's a long day. Some days it's all day, you don't sleep, you get home, shower, maybe take a nap and you're right back at it. So, you know, they, they, they depend on you and, you know, we depend on them for our income. Uh, it's busy, you know, I, I, train a, I train a stable of 14. So, you know, I, I spend a lot of time in the barn and, uh, you know, it's an everyday grind and then go home and do your yard work, take a nap and then come back and uh, you drive at night. In the 50s and 60s, we were literally the only game in town and so we, you know, it was very, very fruitful. And then uh, different aspects of gaming spread out and, and different things going on. And uh, the pie got smaller and smaller and smaller. As a matter of fact, it got to a point where uh, really uh, racing was at a desperate stage. Uh, so uh, losing a lot of our fans, losing a lot of people that would normally come out and bet. It's been a challenge for uh, the entire horse racing industry the last 15 or 20 years. We didn't market, we made a mistake. We didn't market to, a, we missed an entire generation. We're now we're playing catch up. So we're trying to reach out to the younger folks and it's hard to do with, you know, everything that they, they want is so action packed, fast, gotta have it now. But we're trying to make horse racing that type of entertainment where they find it interesting, compelling, a lot of fun. Very competitive, you know, there's, you look around, there's eight or nine guys, you look behind the gate, and eight or nine guys out there that's very capable of beating you every night. Tonight, we have two horses racing tonight. Uh, Ideal Choice, he's in the winner's over, and he's one of my best horses. So, um, he's, he goes up and down the ladder. You know, he makes money. Sometimes he's in with tougher horses where he doesn't. Uh, we have a trotter, NF Soaring, he's in, he's, kind of in over his head, but it's the only class he could get in, so it'll be a very tough race for him tonight. I like to spend a, a little time in the afternoon and uh, look through the program and see what I got, and it uh, looks like I, I could do some good tonight. You know, I got some decent horses, some, uh, some well-classified horses, so, you know, it should be pretty good. Hoosier Park in Anderson, Indiana, will be the host for a night of harness race. And they're off. And uh, towards the inside, it's being the princess for the lead, discreetly alongside. From the outside, Saf Perry showing early speed. Bliss Hanover is away well. Oh, you foxy thing, a fifth on the inside. A window wiper comes away next with a Skyway model, third last. Into the first turn, JD's Infinite Lady races eighth, and the uh, trailer ninth, it's Acadian Pacific. They reach the first quarter, 28 seconds. And up front leading, it's being the princess. The 
Valley is a length and a half. Discreetly to the inside, races in second. Saf to Perry was in briefly, is back out and rolling from third for Dillander. Oh, you foxy thing is some four lengths for the back and fourth then, with Bliss Hanover waiting in fifth. Then comes Wendy Wiper and to the outside, JD's Infinite Lady. Alongside Skyway Model and the trailer is Acadian Pacific. Past the half, 56 and 4, as they race onto the far turn. And to the outside for the lead, Safta Perry. Safta Perry hard pressed to clear now does. Be and my princess to the inside. Races second discreetly. Shuffled a bit to third. Here comes Bliss Hanover. Moving first up, and she is coming with a big move here from fifth to fourth to third. But right there in her back. Oh, you foxy thing. And to the outside, it's Wenda Wiper. Past three quarters and 125 and three. They're in the stretch. Safta Perry off the pylons to the inside. Be and my princess and Bliss Handler coming up alongside. Discreetly splitting these two as they come to the eighth pole. Safta Perry veering out to the outside fence and moving up quickly now comes a window wiper. Window wiper kicks in Bliss Hanover to the inside. Coming to the wire. Window wiper on the outside. Window wiper getting by to win it in 153-3. and three. Bliss Hanover finishes second. Safta Perry third with JD's Infinite Lady. Um, I started when I was 12. Um, I raced at um, actually my first start was at Delaware, Ohio. I was 12 in a matinee because so, you can't really get your license till you're 16 um, for fairs and qualifiers, and then you can get your permit till you turn 18. My dad's uh, been training horses for about 50 years, and I grew up in it. Uh, I graduated in 1990 from high school, and I started working for my dad full time. My dad said he's retired, but he's here every day, so it's family business. Yeah, 40 years. Uh, had a college scholarship, played football, University of Vermont. Lost my uh, knee and uh, my best friend was involved in the horse racing business in Saratoga, New York. And uh, I took an immediate love to the horses. That's where we made our money on the weekends. And uh, so uh, right after college, uh, him and I took off and went to South Florida and went to work for the largest stable in the world, the W.R. Houghton Stable. And uh, we were real fortunate. I worked there 16 years and uh, met my wife through there. And we flew all over the world uh, racing horses for uh, a lot of well-known people, Europe, Canada, all over the United States. So it was, a, it was a grand life, great experience. I grew up in an Amish community, and we had horses at home on a farm. And my uncle was into racing, so I left and went to work for him. Uh, when, uh, when I left, it was kind of rare, but there's more and more leaving now. Well, I'm third generation horseman. I started driving when I was uh, roughly 16. You know, it's uh, qualifying and in, in a fair license you start with, and then you progress from there. You know, through 16, 17 is the qualifying and fair license, and then you go to a provisional license, P license, and you have to have a certain amount of wins, a certain amount of starts, you know, and they anal the stewards analyze your, uh, you know, your performance when you can step up to the top level, which is an A license. You know, a lot of it is a lot of it is on the horse. I mean, if you ain't got the horse, I mean, you only can do so much as a driver. If the train, I mean, right now, in my opinion, today's game is a trainer's game. If the trainers ain't doing their work, us drivers, you know, we see the horse for five minutes, ten minutes, we're on them. I mean, right now, it's a trainer's game and for us drivers, you know. But as far as I mean, for far as drivers, though, we got to be able to put the horses in the position to win. And they're off. A lot of early speed here. Darth Bader on the outside, fastest of all. Crocodile Canyon right there alongside. Towards the inside, it's Major Marcus. Extravagant Art comes away fourth. Gapping out fifth, it's Cole Heat, followed by Bullwinkle. Then it's Major Flight as they head to the first turn. Next to the inside, racing in the eighth spot, it's Lockter. Ninth to the inside, then Don't Betray Me, and the trailer is Boogie Knights, 25 and 2. For a wicked opening quarter set by Darth Bader, and here's Crocodile Canyon. Crocodile Canyon going right at the leader despite the hot pace here. And Crocodile Canyon now taking the lead at 33 to 1 shot, taking command. Darth Bader to the inside, races in second. Major Marcus. His third extravagant art continues along in fourth. Half was 54 and 1 as they charge into the upper turn.
Richard. Crocodile Canyon leads the way. Darth Vader to the inside. And now out and moving it comes Major Marcus from third. And Extravagant Art takes the cover fourth. Inside a major flight. A ground saving trip is fifth. Cole Heat alongside. And to the outside comes Long Term as they approach the three quarters. Crocodile Canyon, the lead is now two, two and a half lengths. Major Marcus on the outside moves to the second spot. Darth Vader dropping back three quarters, 122 and four. Through the stretch and Dillander asking for more from Crocodile Canyon as he extends the lead by four lengths now. Extravagant Art to the outside and a host of others as they come to the 16th hole. Crocodile Canyon desperate for the finish line here. Cole Heat to the outside is coming to with every stride to the wire. Cro Crocodile Canyon will outlast the field at 151-3. and three. Well, if you get hooked up with good trainers and you have good horses, I mean, you're guaranteed to make good money, but if you drive bad horses, you know, you're not going to make as much. You just try to get hooked up with the best trainers you can. You want to win as many as you can. You know, you want to win every race you're in. You know, and it, you know, to me, winning doesn't really have a monetary value, even though we get paid well to do it. Um, you know, it's, it's actually the thrill of just winning. It's competition, you know, it's like any other sport. You want to win, and it's, uh, that's the most important thing to me. Sometimes it's winning that big race, and you know, sometimes there's bills to pay and you need to win that race, even if it's a $5,000 race or it's a $500,000 race. Uh, there's some pressure. I mean, there's big money races, and then there's your own horses that you're wanting to race, and you got to get other people to drive them. It's tough to watch that. I think in the moment, you know, in each individual race, when you're behind the gate, you don't really think about anything but what's in front of you, you know. I mean, obviously, being in the right spot to win, you know, trying to get your, trying to get the people you're racing for money, you know, because that's what we all do it for. There's a lot of uh, the guys up in the clubhouse uh, uh, that I know that have met through that uh, uh, condition that you said. They just basically had bet one of my horses and had done well, so they. They uh, felt obligated to introduce themselves and say thanks. <laughs> and I felt good for them, but I'm thinking of all the thousands that bet and didn't do any good. So I maybe owe them a candy bar or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> Fifth race, claiming Pacers on and behind the gate there in the stretch. Here they come. And they're off and uh, pacing. Uh, Charlie's fast cat from the inside steps right out for the lead. Ira Chief with early speed and from the front side, don't kid me. Through my eyes is out in fourth. QB Killer to the outside, parked in fifth. Ravens with Yankee comes away sixth. Cub Bluey to the inside to seventh. Paradise Station is caught wide to the outside. Eighth ST flight plan and coming away ninth. And the trailer is Sunday. Opening quarter 26 and 4 as they make the turn to the back stretch and uh, back to the front goes Don't Kid Me and Ira Chief is forced to take a seat in behind. Charlie's Fast Cat is right on his helmet third. Through my eyes, Gaff and give it fourth. QB Killam lined up in fifth, and here comes Ravenswood Yankee to the outside. Cub Bluey right there in his back on the move. SD Flight Plan follows the cover flow. Paradise Station is back to ninth. They pass the half in 55 and 3 as they roll onto the far turn. And up front, new leader here, Ira Chief, leads the way to the turn. Don't kid me, Tyler Smith to the inside, getting a breather there in second. Charlie's fast cat is now blocked in third. Ravenswood Yankee inching up on the outside, fourth. He's just three from the leader. On his back, it's Cub Bluey. And to the inside, through my eyes as they pass the three quarter mile marker. On the front, Ira Chief. Chief, Ira Chief at three quarters and 124 and two. Into the stretch, Ira Chief, don't kid me to the inside. Still there and still a threat in second. To the outside in third, Ravens with Yankee. And Charlie's Fast Cat looking for racing room at the pylons. They've less than a 16th ago. Ira Chief cruising away as he opens up by three, four lengths. Late pace here from Ravens with Yankee. And don't kid me to the wire, it's Ira Chief. Ira Chief under wraps at 153. Ravenswood Yankee finishes second, don't kid me, third. SD flight plan was a closing fourth. After the start of the race, we have three judges. We have a photo timer technician, and we have a numbers person who puts the numbers on the board uh, during the running of the race. Um, we have five monitors. 
that re review, there's four different shots on one monitor, uh, and we have a monitor with the odds and uh, the times on it. At the end of every race, as the horses cross the wire, I have a camera that's mounted on the roof, and it takes a picture of every individual horse that crosses the wire. At the finish of the race, the two associate judges come over and verify the results and afterwards I go and individually charge the horses which is what you see in the program and if there is a close finish then the presiding judge will call for a photo at which point I will add the graphics and call AB and they will show it to the public so the public can also see what the judges saw. And uh, they're off. And Hoot and Scoot follows the caddy away. Miss Lucy O to the outside. Twin B Hartland comes out in third. Boiler winner to the inside fourth. Cammy Place angles in from fifth. Scotty Dusty is next. Racing into the first turn. Pipe Creek star third last year. And uh, then to the outside. Racing at eighth is Tiana Stache. The trailer as they reach that uh, first quarter mile marker, give me a break, 27-3, the opening quarter time as they step to the backstretch. Hoot and Scoot leads the way a length and a half. Miss Lucio is out and firing for Shuttler now, and Miss Lucio steps forward quickly to grab the lead. Hoot and Scoot dealing for the pocket seat. Boiler winner remains in third. Twin B. Hartland is underway to the outside. Fourth now, and uh, hustling after that cover. Fifth, it's Cammy Place. Also with a move, it's Skyway Dusty. Pipe Creek Star shuffled back third last now, and uh, Tiana's Leche getting in the way of the cover flow with Give Me a Break trailing. Half was 56 and 4. Racing to the aperture, new leader up front, Twin B. Hartland. Twin B. Hartland and Miss Lucio. As they move side by side to three quarters, Miss Lucio has the inside advantage. Twin B. Hartland pressing on. Hooten scoots to lay threat in third. Boy, the winner to the inside. Past three quarters and 125 as they make the turn. It's Miss Lucio to retake the lead. Twin B. Hartland is there a nagging second. She won't go away. Hooten scoot to the outside. And Boy, the winner is fourth. Charging late to the center of the track. It's the fast closing Tiana's Leche to the 16th pole. Twin B. Hartland, Tiennis Leche, now second. Pipe Creek Star begins to pick up speed. To the wire, Twin B. Hartland. Twin B. Hartland wins it in 154-1. A photo for place. I wish I'd have been more into school a little bit. I miss it a little bit, but I mean, I started, I see my senior year, I took home school so I could go drive at night, and I missed a lot of, a lot of sports activities and stuff, but you know, I figured school wasn't going to get me my career, and I wanted to drive horses the rest of my life, so that's what I did. About two months ago, a horse fell down in a race and I broke my shoulder. I've been out two and a half months, and I'm ready to start back. There's not a lot of women in the sport. Yes, there's grooms, and there's more and more trainers now, but um, as far as driving, there's not too many. You know, there's some around out this way, and there's a couple in Jersey, but really not too many. I think. At this stage in the game, I'm 34. You know, I mean, it it turns like turns into mindless. You know, it's 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 more of a an instinctual thing where, you know, just like anybody else, you do you go to your job and you do your job every day. You know, sometimes it details climbing up on a high rise and washing windows at the 34th level or racing horses. You know, it's pretty it's it, it's it's mindless after a while. It's just your job. And they're off. Fast away, it's electric land for the lead. Jake's spur out well towards the inside boxcar. Danger High Joltage is next in fourth. Pack Blue Chip, good racing position fifth. Rob Ross, Steven gaps away sixth. Starvin Darvin is next. The battling trailers, Camaro and I Scoot Sam. First quarter, 25 and four. And Tietrich has Electric Lad up front with a lead by two. Inside, Jake's Spur, the pocket sitter. Boxcar gaps third. Danger High, Jolji to the inside is next in the fourth. Peck Blue Chip right there in fifth. Another two back to Ra Ra Steven. Now to the outside and underway from last, I Scoot Sam, Starvin Darvin, and the the trailer is a sluggish Camaro. Past the half, 53 and three.
blistering half here as they roll to the upper turn with Electric Lad still showing the way. Inside, uh, racing in second, it's Jake's uh, Spur and on the attack on the outside, it's Peck Blue Chip with a rush. Peck Blue Chip from fifth to second as they near three quarters. Rob Ross Steven is right there in his back, poised to strike three wide. I scoot Sam third over as they hit the three quarter mile marker. They're in 122 and four. And Peck Blue Chip sticks a nose in front. Electric land to the inside, races in second. Rob Ross Steven and I scoot Sam to the inside. Jake's Spur, they plus an eighth of a mile ago. Peck Blue Chip clings to the lead. Inside, still game in the second as Electric Lad. To the outside, Ice Scoot Sam and Jake Spur to the wire. It's Peck Blue Chip. Peck Blue Chip and a three horse battle for place. 151 and four. And they're off. And first to go, it's Red S. Alongside, hop on it, and for the outside, Grand Gabriel. And Grand Gabriel fires up, grabs the lead. Just to the Kilo Talkin, coming away fourth. Pacific Day to the inside, fifth. Classy Thinker is next with the Pacific Sun Ray. LAR trails in eighth as they round the first turn. Line up here behind Grand Gabriel, 27-1 of the opening quarter time. Grand Gabriel by a length and a half. Red S is out and firing for the pocket now. Hop on it, gaps a bit third. Just to the Kilo Talkin is next in fourth. Pacific Date races fifth. To the outside comes Classy Thinker and Pacific Sunray. Approaching the half, new leader up front, Red S. Red S takes the lead at the half in 55 and 2. Grand Gabriel to the inside races second. A pair of long shots then. Hop on it and just to the Kilo Talkin is out and underway for Miller. Grabbing that cover, it's Classy Thinker. Shuffle back Pacific Date to the outer flow, Pacific Sunray. Approaching the three quarters with Red S. Red S by two, Grand Gabriel to the inside, just to the key to talk and stall to the outside third. Classy Thinker will need to swing three wide from there, three quarters and one, 23 and four. Into the stretch with Red S, and Grand Gabriel still threatens. Hop on it to the inside, looking for the spoiler here. They pass the eight pole. Red S outside. Grand Gabriel hop on it, and just to the Kilo Talkin to the 16th pole. It's Red S, and Red S will coast from here. Grand Gabriel settles for second. Hop on a third of the mile 152. Uh, my night went okay. Uh, I drove all 14. Yeah, um, wasn't as good as I would like. I went the last, thought maybe we'd win a few more, but just didn't have the power to be able to do that. I, uh, I went two and uh, had a second, couple thirds. Made money for the most part. It was good, you know, I, had, I thought I could win a couple more than what I did. Um, I went two, had a couple seconds, and a bunch of thirds, a couple checks, but wasn't as good as I planned on it. Uh, the horse I drove in the last was uh, Flighty Lau, uh, Bill Daly's horse. Um, tough old campaigner. He was a three-year-old pacing champ in Indiana. Um, had a layoff, recently come back uh, last week, got beat, was second, but paced a big mile, got beaten like uh, 50 and four. Uh, come back tonight, same class, and he got the job done. A little softer tonight, but he got the job done. Sire steak night tomorrow, there's, uh, there's several $200,000 races and uh, some $40,000 races we're in, so should be a should be a good night.